I want to talk to you a little bit about where we're at in the Bible. According to what Scripture says, <clears throat> excuse me, it says, And I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. By all indications, this is the Antichrist. He's carrying a bow with no weapon. Jesus had already came to the cross and fulfilled what he said he would come for to bring salvation to the earth. And now the, this was after he told John, come up hither, I want to show you what's coming hereafter. So when the Antichrist was released, people began to follow him. The next one says, and I saw when, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given him, unto him a great sword. That's why we're seeing right what we're seeing right now. The, the violence is going on all over the world because we're in that time. The next seal is going to be the uh, black horse, and he has a pair of balances, which means famine, which is coming next. We are living in a time when we don't have much time left, to be honest with you. And if if you're not ready to go, or if you're living in in this modern church age and where people says you can live any way you want to, you better think about what I've written down. Thirty three scriptures I've, I've copied down before. Uh, this time I have thirty three scriptures where that tells you you can't just live any way that you want to. I mean. Except uh, Matthew 5.20 says, Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall no case enter the kingdom of heaven. 5.29, If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It's better you go to hell, but go to be saved, lame, than go to hell, than your whole body to go to hell. Uh, be thou perfect, even as the Father is perfect. In uh, Matthew 5.48, Matthew 7.20, You can tell them by their fruits. Um, uh, Mark third, but thirteen thirty five. Watch ye therefore, lest I come and find you sleeping. A good tree cannot bear uh, bad fruit. In Luke six forty three, it these scriptures are through. There's over a hundred scripture that tell us that you can't live a sinful life and be a Christian. No sin is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Um, Romans. Uh, 12, 1 says, I beseech you by the mercy of God, you present your, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. 6, 16 says that you, who you yield your members to is who you serve, whether sin unto death or righteousness uh, unto holiness. We are, we are uh, living, I realize that there's a, a lot of, uh, Preachers saying that we can live any way we want to, but we're living in that time. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4.3 says the time would come when they would not endure sound doctrine. This is that time. There, the, there, there's people preaching for money. There are people preaching for all kind of things because they can't. you can't miss this. It's all through the New Testament and the Old. Even though people don't accept the Old Testament, we still have to follow. Jesus said not one jot or tittle of the law will pass away until all be fulfilled. We are, we are, we don't live above the law. We're not bound by the law, but we don't live above the law, but we still have to obey the law. God gave us a law to live by that he said that if, uh, well, I, I'll tell you exactly what it says. Not the hearers of the law are just before God in Romans 2.13, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Romans 3, 21 says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So it doesn't matter that, uh, you know, uh, what we claimed, what we hear. I mean, if, uh, if we're not living according to what God's word says, we're not going to make it to heaven. Jesus is coming after a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He tells the church of uh, Philadelphia, um, 
he tells the Church of Philadelphians three seven, beginning to three seven, and under the Church of uh, under the Church of Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. But it goes on down to verse 10 and says, Be, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the earth, or the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. He tells the church of Sardis in 3 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but will confess his name before my father and before the angels. If that says I will not blot it out if you overcome, that means I will blot it out if you don't overcome. Now, I mean, I'm not talking to people that just that want to hear a lie. The Bible says that those that, that, that in the last days the church wants the people to tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. Jesus is coming back after a sanctified people. He's coming back after a people that have uh, put on, as the Bible says, Jesus Christ. Uh, I've also written it down. Uh, yeah. All right here, Romans thirteen fourteen. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Paul said if someone calls herself a brother and they're an extortioner or a drunkard or a fornicator, not to even eat with that person. We're not, not required not to live a sinful life, but we're required not to even deal with people who do, do live that way. It's, it's not impossible to live for God and live a holy life. People that don't want to live that way, sure they want to. They want to do things and whatever, and then you want to say, "Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasing to God," but that's not the case. If He comes and you're living in sin, you're going to be lost. There is no way. There's no way around it. I wrote a book a couple of years ago to that called uh, "The Second Coming of Jesus Christ and the Great Tribulation" by D. W. Terry, and it tells about that time, what it's going to happen, what it's going to be like for those that's left here. It's, it's, a, it's a novel. I mean, it, it speaks to a lot of uh, people traveling and doing things of everyday life and whatever, and then the Lord comes and, and they reject the, pre the preaching, they reject the truth, and then the Lord comes and, and he catches them off guard, just like he said, I'll catch you sleeping, and if I do, you're going to be lost. You know, even if you make it, if you make uh, on the other side of the rapture, if you can't live for the Lord now, it's going to be impossible to live for Him then. If you think violence and, and hunger and and all the stuff is going on is bad now, when you get to the other side, on the other side of the rapture, it's going to be impossible. I put out a a, a video here a while back that I was turned over to Satan, and I was, and I found out the true side of God. I'm going to tell you, whenever you feel what that evilness is on the other side. Believe me, you uh, I, I, would, I couldn't even think about going back because there is nothing like God. There is nothing like living for him, truly living for him, not living this life that these, pre these so-called preachers are preaching. Some of them for the money, some of them for the it's a vocation. They don't even believe what they're preaching because nobody could believe he was preaching the truth and say that God will allow you to be a sinner. If you're a sinner, you're a sinner and you will be judged accordingly. I hope you listen to what I'm telling you and I hope you obey it because I'm telling you, if you're not living the life and it's, it's coming to a head real quick, Jesus is on his way. He may be here before this video goes out, but if you see it, you better accept it. You better study for yourself. I know every one of you have a Bible and if you, all you have to do is look it up. It's not hard to find. I've gave you scripture there, but there are, like I said, there's over a hundred of them that tells us we must be born again. And born again means turn from that old way of life. Thank you. And I hope you listen to what I'm telling you. God bless you.